Today's video is made possible through the support of Becky Brits and hundreds of people just like you kicking in a couple bucks here and there on Patreon. If you're interested in being a part of the insanity, check out the links below in the description. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Hi there guys, welcome to today's Captain's Blog. It's 11.58 hours on September 14th, 2019 and we're here for day number three on the electric bike video. So this is kind of cool. Um, and when we last left our hero, we had gotten to the point of getting the battery in and everything already go and realized that the wiring on this is a Chineseium nightmare, really, is, is what the wiring is. So we're going to give this a considerable haircut and see just how much we don't really need. Now there's some stuff that, because for a lot of this I don't want to put new ends on it, it'd just be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to just wrap up and stow extra wire probably in this area wherever I can. And we'll like, we'll make cute little bundles and heat shrink it together or something. But for some of this, the main power leads especially, um, I want to shorten them as much as I can and make them clean and efficient because it's a bicycle. You don't want to have anything on here that doesn't need to be on here. One of the things, like, as I'm, as I'm getting into bikes, one of the things I'm really learning is they're very elegant machines. They're very efficient, clean, minimalistic engineering. And I like that a lot. So we're gonna see just how much we can get rid of. And yeah, that's what I got. So follow along, enjoy the show. And you could be hanging out with me live right now on my channel, on this channel, if you click the little I don't know, the subscribe thing, oh, click subscribe below, I ah, give a shit. But if you do, if you want to like follow along, there's a little dingle bell thing. And if you click that whenever I go live, especially like the afternoon like this, you can just hop in on the Discord, the link's down below, you'll figure it out, you're not stupid. And if you get in the Discord, you can go in the live chat, hang out with me and join the show. Um, during stuff like this, in the current iteration of the shop, and that will change, it's really hard for me to keep an eye on the YouTube chat because it's just on one screen over there and I'm if I'm looking over here I'm not even focusing on it. But if you get in the voice chat you can hang out with me and talk and kibitz and laugh and that's the idea. So the whole point of this show is we're just a bunch of weirdos hanging out in the shop making cool shit and putting on the internet. That's that's the mission. That's it. There is no grand over we're not here to make the world a better place, but we are, really. Like, we are here to make the world a better place because what we're doing is we're learning stuff and we're hanging out and we're, we're building a community of curious people who want to learn stuff and make things. And that actually does make the world a better place. We're not saving the gay whales for Jesus or anything like that. We're learning how to turn a wrench. We're learning how to solve problems, use critical thinking, and act with reason and common sense and that actually makes you a better person and it makes the world a better place because you're in it and i would like the world to be a better place just because you're in it i think that's kind of cool i try to make the world a better place and usually i just keep getting restraining orders of you can't you can't dress like that here you have to wear pants at a funeral god he doesn't care He's been dead two weeks. What are you in a twist about? I don't know. So this is our battery module, and it's it's kind of cool. Like it's uh the absolute highest quality Chineseium rechargeable lithium-ion battery. It's got actual little lions in it. Um, it's 48 volts at 18 amp hours. It's a model Tango 032, made by. You know, that's your first clue. If if you buy something and they don't even want to put their name on it. Okay, I, I don't know about you, but when I when I made little dumbass drawings for my mom in the second grade, I put my name on them. I've made a lot of really terrible videos. I put my name on them. So maybe I'm just a complete psychopathic megalomaniac. Let me check. Sarge? Yeah? Opinion on that? Uh, you're missing a few descriptors, but yeah, you're pretty close. <laughs> Thank you, Sarge. Appreciate it. Um, 
Or maybe these guys just make such a, che a cheap, crappy product, they don't even want to put their name on it. But that's the point in this. This is the cheapest possible e-bike build. We got a Walmart, uh, Schwinn? Who made this? Schwinn, big, big green letters right on the side of this. So we got a Walmart Schwinn and a Chinese battery and power supply. It all came as a kit. So yeah, so we got, this is, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, wow, all right. So, is that an IEC cable? This, oh yeah, this is an IEC cable, but it's got a weird middle thing with no wires in it. The, can you zoom in on that? Can you give me a really tight zoom on that? Yeah, you see that, that it's worth a damn? Nice so it, it looks like an IEC cable, but it's a Y3-E, that's Yankee 3-Echo, and it's got a T slot as the center conductor, and there isn't actually any conductors in there. So that's um, here. It gets better. The hits just keep on coming. We've got I'm that here on, and, and that's, that's a female. And then we've got a female on the battery, which is a regular IEC conductor or IEC cable with the three vertical lines. And then we've got a male here, which I'd like to point out is rated for 10 amps at 250 volts. And this is labeled Charlie Tango hyphen Delta 1-4. So this clearly says 10 amps, 250 volts, right? I believe it. Okay. The problem is the battery output's 30 amps. Now here's the thing about amps. Amps don't care about your volts. Volts, think of electricity, like water in a pipe. Oh gosh. <laughs> and that actually works on this, okay? Volts is the pressure. So that's how thick you need the walls of your pipe to be. That means for volts, your insulation cares about your volts. Your wire doesn't give a shit about your volts. Your insulation cares about your volts. This wire would totally happily, this, this says it's rated for 250 volts, okay? That wire would absolutely take 300 volts just fine. 400, 500, yeah. 600, you'd probably put 1,000 volts for this wire without any problems. Okay, the reason it says 250 volts is in much of the world, 240 volts is your nominal maximum power at the end user level. Um, and countries. once you're below 300 volts, that's a magic line. 300 volts is a really magic line. Once you're below 300 volts, you don't, electricity won't jump through air below 300 volts. You can drag an arc out. You can take a, a five volt arc and strike it and drag that out if you have enough amps. You put a thousand amps behind it, you can pull it out rawr, and a big fire thing and it's cool. But but it won't initiate. You have to. You have to. You have to strike the arc. Two things have to touch. What are you doing? Okay. I don't want to tell you because you mock my Britishness. Okay. Are you making tea? Fuck. Yeah. Thought so. If you're down at 300 volts or below, the wires actually have to touch to be able to arc out because the electricity will not jump through the air. Assuming normal atmosphere and pressure and all that. Like if you're doing this in a vacuum or something, okay, all bets are off. But if you're just some dude dicking around on an electric bike, you're fine. So that's the, that's the volts. With amps, it's about how thick the wire is and what it's made of. Because like to carry the same amount of amps, and if you have an aluminum wire and, and a copper wire, the aluminum wire has to be twice as thick as the copper wire to carry the same amount of amps, ish. Stick with that for normal stuff. If you're doing high-tech engineering and building skyscrapers, then you shouldn't be fucking using aluminum wire anyway, now should you? Yeah, all right. So this, where this said, the, the plug says 10 amps, tells us that the conductors are rated for 10 amps, but we're pulling 30 amps through it now, we're doing that at a way lower voltage. We're only doing this at like, I don't know, 48 volts. But we're doing this at three times the amps the plug's rated for. Now, I'm looking in the plug, and I'm saying, well, those conductors would be fine for 30 amps. That's okay. But because the plugs are rated for 30 amps doesn't mean that the interconnects inside are rated for 30 amps, etc. Which means if we lean on this really hard and draw a full 30 amps, something might melt and set on fire. And it might be right under my ass when doing that while traveling at a high rate of speed in open air and really fanning the flames. So I could die. Eh, it happens. 
So just that's a thing to keep in mind though is insulation thickness is where your voltage comes into play and wire gauge is where your amperage comes into play. And those two things are really turns out really important. So what we've got here is this plug has to go into the battery. Now I'm curious, when we turn the battery off, do we lose voltage here? Let's let's put a meter on that and see if that switch actually does anything because I'm not trusting a damn thing on here. I'm not a particularly trusting person to begin with, so. Let's grab our trusty Fluke 189. Today's video is not sponsored by Fluke, but they could. I don't mind if they want to send me stuff. I like Fluke. Alright, so we're going to put our probe tips in the little little baby Anderson power pole connector. It's so cute. I'm used to these things for forklifts and shit. So. <laughs> this is just, it's so cute. We're going to put the keys. Alright, we got the key. Alright. Well, that's a thing. So I'm showing 22.9 volts right now, and it's off. Let's go to really most sincerely off. This is the unlocked thing. 22.45 volts, 22.45 volts. Turn it on, and I get 54 volts. All right. Also, it said that was fully charged. So. If I turn it off, take the key out, I still got 20 volts on the thing. If I turn it on, I have 54 and a half. All right, so we're gonna unplug this, which we should do anyway while we work on it, but that, that goes to show you don't trust your switch, because off ain't off. Chinese, the young shit, huh? All right, what we can do, however, right now, no we can't, god damn it, all right. So we got, it comes with these sexy bullet plugs. I used to have to deal with these a lot working on motorcycles and I hated them then. Um, these were like all the rage. If you, if you work on uh, old motorcycles, you see these a lot. The 1970 vintage, 70s vintage Honda CB550 inline four motorcycle has roughly 10 billion of those damn things stuffed behind the headlight and that is absolute shit. Why do I have, where, see, it's going to be really cool once I get this place built and organized and I can find shit. Sarge, you don't happen to know where my electrical, my sexy ones for the boat are, do you? Sarge, you with me? Are you in a T-coma, Sarge? Sarge is in a T-coma. I have a box. Somewhere I have a glorious box of electrical love. love. Hi, Sarge. You're back. Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't hear it. I was scared. I was all alone. You just left me. I didn't know what to do. I can't find no, just my in, um, fucking electrical box. episode is not sponsored by Flip. It's sponsored by Flip, the PH. They're Chinese non-union customers. <laughs> <laughs> Sarge, I got a box. It looks like this. Okay, it's this kind of box. It's got might be in the garage, because I use it with boat stuff. I'll be right back. I think it's in the garage. Pow! Stop! Don't move a muscle. It's Harry Rickenbacker's birthday. What? Harry Rickenbacker's birthday today. I have no idea who that is. You do? Oh! So, Rickenbacker. Yeah, not Rickenbacker. No, I'm thinking of the popcorn, aren't I? That would be Orville Redenbacher. Yeah, I got the two mixed up. Hey, well, he, his family might make popcorn, we don't know. He makes pizzas. No, that's a different guy. That's Robert Trains. He makes pizzas. Yeah. Damn it! Do you want to be in the right voice channel? Yeah, put me in the right voice channel. Yeah.
There we go. I'm your gentleman's fat ass. Am I in the right voice channel? No, I guess. Hi, guys. They don't want to talk to me over here. I want to go back to my old school. Mr. Hubbard says incoming story time with Sarge. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I have a clue what he's talking about. Sarge, <clears throat> So is Mr. Rickenback in here? When Chris went upstairs to get his stuff, he was making the joke comment that you were going to build a better. That's a blue. He's a blue. That'll be fine. Hey, that's Batman. Yes, that's a fat man. Yes. You are no, barely I'm awake, Chris. sir. But I'm glad yeah, you're here. Good morning. We should have had you in here like five minutes ago when we were talking about electrons and angry electrical pixies. He was here. He's been here the whole time. Whenever I walk near a microphone, fat man is there. It's like, it's just what he does. It's kind of terrifying. I'm kind of amazed he chose to stay down in that, in the, uh, my stream was in the hot tub. Alright, so I've got little blue butt connectors, and I've got some red and black heat shrink, because we are going to sexy this bitch. Oh, huh? What? Fat man, are you talking shit? Yep. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to plug in some of I the other... you love me. I'm running on delay because you're not coming in through the voice, through the live chat voice stream right now. Sarge can fix that. I'm hearing him through the live stream voice chat. Like, that's how I've been having conversations with him. All right, so I've got the throttle connection here. What I want to do is just a quick hack it together, give her some juice, and see something move. That's a red, black, white plug. So that goes there. What the hell do you do? I'll bet you're the throttle. No, you're not the the crank position sensor probably. So I've got brakes and crank position sensor that I'm not doing anything with. And I'm going to see if I can get away with not doing anything with those. Um, the plus and minus plug. Where's the other one? Oh, I just had it. It's not this one, but we're going to need this. It's this one. This damn thing. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I can't do that safely. But I can do it with alligator clips. This is super safe. Totally do this at home. This is how you should do all of your best work. All right, we're just gonna hack this together momentarily. This is a crazy stroll. Okay, so there's our positive. Somebody's at the door. That will give us a ground. Now let's see if the damn thing powers up at all. This is super safe. No fuse, no, no nothing. This is dumb, don't do this at home. Okay, we're on. Nothing at all lights up. I'm turning the head unit on. Hey, that lights up, all right. Things are happening. Oh, shit, it moves. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, it works. How about that? Oh, that is super cool. 
All right, what do these do? Oh, it gives me a speedometer readout. Brakes work. Okay, so this is second gear. It goes to, oh, I'm in kilometers an hour. Third gear goes up to 66 and a half kilometers an hour. Fourth gear, 66 and a half. Fifth gear, 66. Okay, so no matter what I do, I get a max of 66 and a half kilometers an hour. And clearly there is no regenerative, bra regenerative braking. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm going to turn this off, which is a lie, but I'll do it anyway. Um, we'll disconnect our battery here and here so we're safe. It works! It works, it works, it works. That is so cool. <laughs> it works, yay. All right, I'm going to unplug the battery and what we're going to do is we're going to directly wire this to here with a 30 amp inline fuse in the middle and we're just going to clean this mess up because this is some advanced I believe. So I'm going to bring that up and come in this side and these are going to go in thusly somewhere and we're going to put a fuse we're, we're going to tuck our fuse right in here. That's my plan. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut back these wires a little bit, or cut back this insulation. Now I'm just gently pressing on here, because I want to score it, I don't want to cut all the way through. Oh, i got to take that Anderson apart. I might be able God to use it. should be cut through the Chinese wiring. Huh? God forbid we should cut through the Chinese wiring. Oh, we're going to cut through a lot of the Chinese wiring, but I, I wanted to just score off, this is a heat shrink tube. I just wanted to clean that off. You got to remember, sir, you don't know what's in the Chinese. Yeah. Oh, I know it's inside the Chinese wire tube. It's, it's more shitty Chinese wiring. So, that's going to go up there and then come around to here. Yeah. All right. I might be able to... Yeah, maybe. Place that so it's actually copper in there. Oh, it's copper. It's totally copper. I'm going to cut these off. I could really keep the whole mess down low, can I? I think it's going to be aluminum or something cheaper. No, this would be copper. Mm. Yep, copper. It's even tinned. Nice. Alright. And I'm going to put these two little things together because that's a nice complete little Anderson power pole. Now we've got this and I'm, I don't even know. I'll, I'm going to use this for the rail bike thing maybe. But I'm going to cut these two wires right off. Well, I'm just going to cut this wire right off. I don't even need the other one. Because this is my nice sexy inline fuse holder with a 30 amp fuse in it which just happens to be the right size for what I need. And I'm going to tuck you down about here because that's the main fuse and it's something I shouldn't really have to mess with terribly often. But when you do, you absolutely got to get to it in a hurry. And I can put that in there and fuse. I could VHB that fuse right to the front. That can go thus. You got a piece of VHB for that? Probably. All right. I'm gonna grab the big strippers because we're doing big manly wiring. I'm gonna cut this end off because I'm not gonna use that kind of end on this. All right. So, and we're gonna cut those ends off. 
but we're going to cut these off really tight because that's that goes through a sealed dingus and that's all of that wire we get so i'm you can see i'm even coming down onto the crimp connector because you can see where it's crimped which tells you where the metal part is and i want to save every inch of that wire i can Okay, so that, that wire sucks, but we, we know we're going to start here and build our way back because this is the thing we can't control and this is the thing we can. That was way more of that than I wanted to strip, but you guys are just enthusiastic today. Okay, let's, let's try. What the hell? Okay, so this unit maintains residual charge, we just learned. Oh? I just got a little snap and pop thing happening there, and I hope I didn't fuck it up, but... Yeah. I'm not supposed to be getting snappy pops off the little power unit, but that held a residual charge of something, I don't know. Um, Alright, so we're going to put a couple big crimp connectors on here. These are not the crimpers I want for this, but these are the crimpers I have. So we're going to see just how much engagement our crimps want. About a quarter inch. So we're going to cut this back because it stripped off way more insulation than I wanted to remove. I'm going to strip this back about a quarter inch. Line this right up in here. Put that right where I want it. Oh, okay. You happy with that? Tug test it. Okay, that's really most sincerely in there. Grab another one. Now, on my crimpers, Sarge, can you zoom in on that? Yep. One moment. Two. Right here. Yeah, that'll do. On my crimpers, you can see there's the big notchy part. Like, uh, here, let me get my, my official pointer. There's a big notchy part there. That's for uninsulated crimp connectors. This one here, the softer part, and it says right next to it, INS. That's insulated. These are insulated connectors. You don't want to use the punchy part. It'll, it'll crimp them better, but you're going to break the insulation doing it. And if something touched, it could arc out. And I'm trying to avoid that on my bike. So we insert the wire into the thing. And the wire doesn't go in this far. You want to look inside. What you've got here, with these, this is just a boot. This is just plastic tube. Okay, the plastic tube covers the whole thing. So you've got plastic tube boot, the actual crimp part in the middle, plastic tube boot. Now in the middle, you'll see a little thing. And Sarge, are you getting this? Yeah, I'm still locked on the camera. Okay. In the middle, you'll see the little thing, and that's where they've actually shoved in a part of the little metal tube so that when you stick the wire in, it stops. And you want to stick the wire in that far. So if you watch this wire go in the tube, it goes in to there. You don't want any insulation going into the metal part. But you don't want the metal part going past the halfway part. So you gotta, you got to balance everything all out. It's not hard to do. It's just one of those things that it's easy to screw it up. And when you crimp it, you want to crimp. There's two halves of the thing, and you want to be inside the end but this side of the halfway mark, you get it all lined up just so. And it's one of those things that takes about a thousand times longer to explain than it takes to do. But I've seen so many people do them wrong. And then when you crimp it, you squeeze these with everything you got all the way down. And then tug test it. Grab each side, give it a good solid pull. Because if it's going to come apart, you want it to come apart now. This is, this is the best time for things to break. Now, we're not going to do this right now, but in a minute we're going to heat shrink that. So I'm going to cut my heat shrink to there. And because we're going to heat shrink after, 
We're going to put this heat shrink on now. So we're going to put a red tube of heat shrink over the thing. And we're just going to slide that up the wire a little bit. And we'll come back to that later. But once we put the next thing on, we won't be able to put the heat shrink on. So it's important to do that now. And I'm just going to let the heat shrink hang about half an inch off either end. And then we'll slide that right up on there. So now we got our heat shrink in position. Cool. Interesting thing about crimp connectors, they, they sell them right next to the car audio stuff in most auto shops. Okay. Do, do people buy them when they buy a new stereo? Do they fuck? Probably not. Not as much they as they start, should. Yeah, they just start so putting that shit together. I got this extra plug thing, and this actually has the cross lock. I'm going to keep these together, because I'm going to use this for something, I just don't know what. But this is, it's a cool part. I'm just not using it on this bike, because I don't need that level of bulk and complexity. So the next thing we do, is we got to add in the fuse, and I'm going to wire it in, and then figure out where the wires will let me put it. But I'm just going to wire it in at first, because this one's going to be long, and that'll be okay. And then the black one will will just run and that'll go straight in. So I'm strip this down. Oh, you like that cable. Car stereos with just nasty ass wiring in them. I hate doing car audio. I I've, I've I, never I've never liked I've car got audio. I've a system that works and I like that system. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other side. Now a thing that I do with these is I like to get them on the crimpers and use the crimpers to hold everything where I want it. Because then I can really take the time to get that right where I want it to be. And this is even better with ratchet crimpers because you put like one click on. Not enough to actually crush anything, but just enough to get a good grip on it. So that's in there good. I'm hair long, but it's so far up in the boot I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to bring that right there, push in, squeeze, and then everything you got. And now we do the double tug test. We just pull the whole thing. Yep, you're in there, you're in there, good. And now we slide our heat shrink down. That's just sexy, that's just good. And I could heat shrink that if I wanted, but heat shrink guns over there, so we'll get to that in a minute. Now the other side of this is gonna come right around. And the other thing this lets me do is I can just leave the key on because I can take this out and that's easier to carry in your pocket than a key. The downside is you don't want to do that all the time because this is not rated for 10,000 insertion cycles like that lock is. All right, it's also so. not like theft. Huh? It's also not theft compatible because they'll figure that out pretty quickly. Yeah, but how many people that are out stealing bikes carry fuses around with them? Oh no, they don't. They'll just stuff a piece of chewing gum wrapper in there. Good luck. Won't work. And really, if they're stealing the bike, they're stealing the bike, the whole thing. Right. All right, so we're gonna need this, and we're gonna need a piece of heat shrink, like this. So this one we gotta do all at once, because once we're on, we're on. So I'm gonna need to cut you at about there. So we're just planning ahead. The, the thing with heat shrink, heat shrink is awesome, but you got to plan ahead. You got to you got to be working three steps ahead of where you're at when you're using heat shrink because once it's on, once you put your crimp connect on, you can't take it off with the heat shrink on. And I probably don't actually have to heat shrink these because the connectors themselves are heat shrink. That's just an added layer and it makes it nice bright color-coded flag of what I got where. Urgh! But I mean really there's like a dozen wires in the whole thing. You should be able to keep track of what's what. So far the best anti-theft measure I've ever seen was wiring up the ignition to the rear window controls on a two-door car. That's neat. My car has a very elite anti-theft mechanism. <laughs> yep, it works great. Even the guys at the tire shop can't use it. Ugh. Yeah, like, for anyone who's not quite getting it, two-door cars don't have rear windows. 
They don't? So, oh, they don't! Do they? Okay. No, it's pieces of glass. That's but clever the as hell. The car that the person I had had it, they sell it in a two-door or a four-door variety, but the doors in the front are still the same doors. Okay. So it has a, it has a little cutout where you could put the rear window controllers. So he puts it in, and no one thinks that, hey, this is a two-door car. Oh, Why for fuck's sake! Hey, Sarge. See what it I did wrong? Not. Um, out of there, into there, around. I'm not immediately seeing it, but I think... The wire's on the outside of the cage. I should bring it on the inside of the cage. Oh, and they're barrel connectors, uh, butt connectors, aren't they? Yeah, so I'm gonna cut it off and start over. It'll go oh. much faster this time, because no, like, I won't explain well, it. I had to actually, no, yeah, recrimping it would be faster. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, because otherwise you could like, unscrew the box and thread the box through. No, I'm just going to cut the thing out. Yeah, the amount of people that got in his car and it never clicked out, why is there real window controls? Well, it's, you wouldn't notice it if you didn't, if you didn't know to look for it. That's clever as hell. Alright, we need another blue one. Okay. I'm waiting for the person who like tries to put it into the seatbelt sensor. Because what thief puts a seatbelt on before stealing a car? All of them. When once they got it going? You, you hear the phrase it, like, you hear the out. phrase drive it like you stole it, and people think that means like go like hell. I don't know about you, but if I just stole a car, I'm gonna follow every damn law and drive totally normally and be a good boy. In. God damn it. God damn it, Sarge! Wasn't me? What did I do wrong? You did it again, didn't you? I did the exact same thing wrong twice. <laughs> right, would you like to help me guide you through this one? I'm gonna Ready? just. Uh, I'm, the post. I got it. It's already, it's already in the right position. Also, I gotta buy more cream connects. I'm running low on blue butt connectors for some reason. Right, are you definitely sure you don't want to pass that behind any other pipes? I'm, I'm going to check before I crimp it. Yeah. God, I'm yeah, done. I hate doing car audio, but I've developed a system. So have I. You pay the guy at the place to install it. Oh, no, I, I always do it myself because it's fucking easy. It's easy, but it's a pain in the ass, and it's one of those things that if you do it all the time, you get really good at it, and if you don't, you don't get really good at it. Oh yeah, it's one of those things where you can never do it and be comfortable at the same time. If oh yeah. Leaning or bending over something. Yeah, it's like working on boats. The yeah, only thing yeah. worse than car audio is boat electrical. I never mess with the anything behind the factory plug. Ah. I always buy an adapter or a harness cable, just so that I can fuck up the part that you can get rid of. Okay, I'm inside the bar. Or if you're my size, you pay the dude. I, I pay the dude. Well, Alright, we got that in there where we want it. We're good there. We'll tuck up some of that wiring in a minute. And this one just goes straight home, and we're good. Yes, yeah, so that's my problem, is I'm frequently the dude. I've never owned a car, but I've installed God knows how many car stereos. You've never owned a car? Okay, I technically owned a car, but like, we won't talk about that. Okay. I'm the perfect example of why you don't buy the car until you've got a fucking license. I was saving up for about a year before I bought my first car when I was 16 and uh, drove that for a couple months before it died. And then I got a motorcycle. Alright, here we go. So all those are good, all those are done. Before we heat shrink it, let's 
give it a power on test because now it's all properly wired in for power. Got him dumb. You gotta plug the main power in first. Uh, All right. And you gotta turn on. Yeah. So how do I change this to miles an hour? No, there's a manual somewhere. So that's sorted. Now it's just, and, and we see that it works, so we don't need these wires at all, but I'm not going to cut them off. I'm just going to secure them down in here. I'm going to secure this, and then we'll start running, once we get the main power mounted, well, i got to heat shrink that, and then once we get the main power stuff mounted and done, we'll get into the smaller wires. So I'm going to grab my sexy, sexy heat shrink gun over here. So, does that factory have the ability to uh, run accessories? I don't know, and I'd like to know. And I'd like to figure out how, because I don't get 12 volts off the battery anywhere, but it'd be super cool if I could run 12 volt accessories off this. Because that's, yeah, that's like the standard voltage for things. Yeah, because I can't imagine why you put such a big battery and like still they still make you have to like buy torch batteries and shit. Yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm riding an electric bike, I should I, I should just be able to run front and rear lights. You know, I have a headlight, a tail light. Um, yeah, like, with all the shit back here, I should have a fucking out. USB port somewhere to be able to charge my phone or a camera or something. That's what I'm saying, I'd imagine 5 volts would be the voltage they'd give you for all that. Because pretty much all, a lot of bike stuff is close to 5 volts or 3 volts. Okay, I'm going to get that centered right in the middle. And then attempt to not melt. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. My crimp connectors are heat shrink in their own right, so I gotta heat shrink that first. Wait, does it? I've never done that. What? I didn't know that heat crimp connects were heat shrink. Uh, when you get the marine rated ones, they are. Uh, I work on boats yeah, a lot, so all my all my heat shrink stuff is is marine rated. Okay, mine might not be. And if you get the good ones, they even have like some glue inside. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, so I do that one. And then, with it still warm, I slide this right on over. Oh, that's easier. Yeah. All right, let me pull that up and out. That's beautiful. All right, that's the first one. And now we'll pull this way outside the frame. And we'll do this one next. 
which is a little tricky at this end, but I'll just be careful. slide this down even while that's still hot I'll slide that right down because a little and you can see this is already starting to shrink which is kind of cool now how you do heat shrink depends a lot on what your heat source is if you're using an open flame you got to be dancing all over the place but with an electric torch like this and this is actually, I think, a hot air rework gun. Um, I like to just hit the end, and you'll see it shrink, and then you just follow that shrink down, and you move at the rate that it moves. Okay, so this one's a little trickier, because I've got to get up and around. And I want to not set my seat on fire. our last one there That's lovely. Okay. That's all our heat shrink for that. So that solves our main power connection. And we're gonna, I'm gonna VHB that somewhere, somehow. Not entirely certain. I, I have a desire for that to be cleaned up more. I'm gonna grab my VHB. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to put a big piece of VHB tape on the side here. We got to make sure not to go all the way down the side because we need that to open. We'll just put this right like that. So that's one side of our VHB mounted. Now we got to figure out where we want to put this. Do we want on the top, coming out like that? I wouldn't put it there. Why not? Because is at some point are you going to want to be able to pull the battery out? Oh, this whole thing moves, doesn't it? Yeah. You're right. right. Top of the control box. You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. I could, however. Put this on the plug. Or well, what about on the on that flat plate bracket that the other box is mounted to? I'd have to put it way up here to do that. And that's kind of ghetto. Yeah. So I can't put it on a box. Thanks for pointing that out because I totally would have done that. I'm going to put it on the plug. Seems like 
the best of available options. Yeah, we can also stabilize it with a zip tie just to make sure it stays. Yeah, that's not a bad idea either. All right, I'm making sure my plug's all the way in before I do this. And uh, pull this off. I'm leaving a good quarter inch gap just for safety. That's not going to need a zip tie at all. Okay. There's a full square inch of VHB in there. That's that's Skookum. It's okay. Alright, so the next thing to route is because I'm going from biggest down to smallest the next biggest is the main motor power feed and that comes up here so I'm gonna come up this I'm gonna cut that zip tie because that doesn't need to be there that needs to be here and we're gonna run zip ties up the arm to up the here and we're gonna come under that so I'm gonna break this connection so this, I love the noise that hangs. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun. Um, we're gonna come under that. And down there. You're gonna get bundled together. And that's gonna come under here, through that, and then down to here. All right, so this has a whole bunch of pins. There's nine pins on there. And it's super important to line them up right. And there's arrows, but no index. As soon as it's in, just put a white line across the table. No, there's arrows here. Oh. I'm tempted to heat shrink them together, but I'm not gonna do that right now. What I am gonna do, is turn this on and make sure it's all plugged in right before I secure that. Okay. So that's good there. Let's grab a handful of zip ties. How bad are the comments? Uh, there's barely any. The last one was uh, Bunny Bono saying, uh, I was just about to say wait. How fast do you think you're going to get going on that? 62 kilometers an hour per to the speedometer. I'm going to say closer to 20 miles an hour, but. Yeah. I'm not, this is not a high speed machine. It's a fucking well, bicycle. I'm just, I'm just thinking on the, going that fast on a bike and then having to get on the brakes. Get time. I, I realistically expect to drive this at a top speed of 20 miles an hour. I would, usually that's about where they're restricted to. I don't know how it works in America, but in the UK it's 50 miles an hour of, uh, on, under its own power. Well, I know for like golf carts, if it's less than 25 miles an hour, it has, or over 25 miles an hour, it has to have a seatbelt. 
Have you all seen the YouTube video about the entire town that basically just drives golf carts? No, uh, go carts. Golf carts. Well, hell, there's a town like that not far from here called uh, Mackinac Island. No cars at all. Uh, they still got cars, but they basically like widened all the pavements, and like everyone just drives golf carts. Go for works. Okay. And like, they're all trying to make out how like they're really progressive and all I can help thinking is, is you're riding a go-kart, a, a golf cart, somewhere you would have originally walked. You're not progressive, you're fat. <laughs> I had a buddy for a senior design project. Uh, he did it for Schweitzer. They wanted them to take, basically they had a Schweitzer branded golf cart thing that people could drive around campus and they wanted them to put a bunch of their toys on it. For monitoring and everything and upgrade it. Yeah. Well, they got a different company to give them a higher power motor, and they got a different company to give them better batteries, but they had to limit it and think it was 20, so they didn't have to do seat belts. My buddy wanted to know how well it pulled together, so he went to one of the steepest hills in town, killed it so the steering would still work, so the electronics wouldn't work, and coasted this golf cart at like 55 miles an hour down the hill. <laughs> <coughs> he just wanted to know is it going to come apart or not? But this thing would do 20 miles an hour up like a 30 degree grade. Oh God. So I got spiral wrap, and this is gonna suck. Um, oh, I hate that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna use zip ties. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> zip ties. The geeks made me laugh. WD-40, duct tape, bailing wire, and zip ties. Have you seen the Lion King be involved in WD-40? No. I'll go send you a thing. are doing real work here? I'll do real work. You you are at... Shit. Okay, so this one has to go from the back... Oh my god. <laughs> so, this wire is hardwired there and the plug is way the hell out on the end. But all the other ones are hardwired here and the plug is way out on this end. It's just, it controls which way you have to route the cable from. Oh my god. Say it together, class. Chinesium. Oh my god. Alright. Well, I can do this. I'm smart. I'm even smart on the internet. So... So that comes apart, and we have to completely route this cable where we want it before we do anything with it. I'm going to keep you two together, so that's cool. And then it's going to come down among these, because I can't zip tie to these cables because they move. Yeah, I, w I was about to say I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I can zip tie under the cables, and that's okay. And I'm definitely, like, I'm going within the frame and stuff. And 
Oh, I can do that. I can totally do that. I wonder if there's going to be any words about the breaking the airlines and breaking the uh, insulation. There, it's not going to touch it. Oh, okay. Well, well clear. All right, so this one disconnects back here. So that's a totally different thing. And we're going to take this. And go through there. Question I've always wondered: Why do they put the little washery olive things on the on the braking gear lines? Where up at the top? No, like look straight in the middle where it uh, here? opens up. Here, you see more. Yeah. These? That's a vibration damper. Oh. I always thought it was just like to watch it cool and be all movie and stuff. No, no, no. It's a vibration damper. Ah, oh, cool. That makes sense. Yes, well, I've never known what they did. You know what the funny thing is? What? They use the exact same idea on uh, high tension power lines. I'll bet Fat Man can show you pictures of them. What, the little rubber things? Well, they're big metal things, but yeah, you'll see them on uh, power lines. Oh, I've seen those. The, what about the cross shaped ones? No, those uh, those aren't, well, yeah, those are vibration dampers, but they're not. Those are mainly separators. But you'll see little dog bone shaped things on high tension lines that just hang out on the line because yeah. when the wind blows over the power line, it creates eddy currents, and those eddy currents will establish oscillations in the power lines. Yeah. So they use little little dog bone things, little weights. I've got, I actually own a couple hanging around somewhere. Um, and Aeolian vibration. What are they? Aeolian vibration is what you're talking about. I don't think so. I think it's pentatonic vibration. Or at least ah, chromatic. Cool. It's, I really, for anything near my house, I require it be G mix Lydian. But if it has to be Aeolian, I can do that. But I'm going to need someone to like hold my hand and tell me it's going to be okay. The one we must deal with is Aeolian, which is at much lower wind speeds, like that 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. Oh, wow. Okay. Is what we ended up using them for. And it wasn't that it was hurting the transmission line, it was shaking the shit out of the distribution line that was built underneath it. Oh, well, that's a thing. The vibration was transferring through the pole and it was shaking apart all the distribution hardware. Okay, so this also has the little arrows, but this one's keyed. I like this plug better. you seen the uh, wraps they'll do on distribution lines of work screws? Yeah, uh, I've seen it on low power distribution stuff. Yeah, that's for icing. Oh, all right, it's power up task. It's to prevent galloping conductors. There, okay, everything's good. Now I can properly laced in all these damn wires, of which there are a lot. Not that many, really, but there's a lot. We got a lot going on. So now I'm going to grab a big fistful of zip ties. So here'd be a fun thing for you to go. You, I don't know, you might be able to see it there. You get enough ice. You have an ice... You live in Michigan! Wind's blowing. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it has to be under the right condition. It's got to be the side... The ice has to build up because the wind's blowing sideways and it builds up what amounts to like a wing on the line, which then the wind blows right, you get lift, it'll pick up until the line kind of twists over and then it'll fall back down again. And it's called galloping, so the line will pick up as high as it can and it'll drop and slam and then it'll pick up and it'll keep doing that. Oh, that's cool. Until it'll actually stretch out the 336 KCML wire until it snaps. Really? Yep. And that's when your paper so goes off. So those corkscrews you put on there, the ones we did, um, break up the ice pack so it doesn't form in a nice uniform wing, so the line can't do that. So you get a lot of ice, but I don't know how much of it comes in sideways versus straight down. Oh, fair bit. <laughs> fair, fair bit. That, that's a thing that happens here. Yeah, the fun part of that transmission line that was vibrating uh, about the underbuild, 
that wasn't our underbuilt. Really? We built the transmission line to build a loop in, and we came over the top of the REA's distribution line because they already had easements. So basically, we built it and then put them back underneath us, and it was their line that was getting shaken to crap. That was a fun discussion. The entire head is done. Sweet. And I only used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zip ties just in the head. All right, so now I gotta figure out how to get this up the body. And what I'm thinking is I'm gonna run a zip tie around the tube and pinch the wire, but not the uh, the brake cables, because that would that would be bad. Sure, I got enough. So I got an outage call this morning. It happens. Did you fix uh, it? Dude called wanting to know if we come turn the power back on because we turned it off earlier because he had a structure fire. And oh. he put it, I got it under control. Can you come turn it back on? <laughs> <laughs> Did the fire department come? Uh, I'm pretty sure that I didn't hear about the initial one. So the fire department called our standby lineman on the emergency line and said, come turn this off now. And I'm guessing after so, the fire, they don't they don't bother to you know be like oh yeah everything's cool now turn power back on. Unless the fire marshal or the electrical inspector gives an okay to re-energize, we will not re-energize it. Good policy. Yep. Okay. I need more zip ties. Because they, because they will do that where they'll say. Okay, we've had them disconnect these circuits to this part of the structure, so this doesn't get re-energized. But it's okay if they re-energize this part of the structure. But we ain't making that call. Yeah, that's a fire marshal electrical inspector problem. Fire marshal electrical inspector liability problem. I should get like pictures of the pipes around, but I think you guys would both cry. <laughs> no, we'd laugh. I'd just laugh. I guarantee I've seen sketchier shit. Hell, I've probably built sketchier shit. I've seen panels that have obviously been on fire that are still in service. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the fun ones. I've had to do maintenance on shit like that. Yep. Yeah. Well, when you have to put notes on the job that says, do not use position 27. <laughs> because it appears to have been previously damaged in a fire. A couple of years ago, the roof was leaking in my apartment block. And it was leaking through the roof, over the top of a lighting fixture, and there was water just dripping off the bulb. I had that happen in my house because of a floor talking line went bad. Yeah, well, it gets better. The, la the landlord comes along and says this and decides to do something about it. He puts a bucket on the floor to catch the water. Yep. Well, I mean, it's a start. I had it dripping out of my ceiling fan. I, I came along and I'm like, are you fucking serious? I said, like, live electrical work, water's dripping over it, and you're more worried about the water getting on the floor. Well, that water's going to go to the thing below and cause more damage. So the first thing is, you know, don't make a new yeah. victim. Cool. And as long as it doesn't touch, you know, the 240 volt part, as long as it only touches the neutral part, you're relatively okay. It was dripping, like the, the, the light bulb was crying. Yeah, but the outside part of that connector, if you're using like an Edison style base, the outside part's the neutral, the return. The inside parts, the hot part. Edison 2, the return of the neutral. Yeah, but <laughs> you also don't have like, it's a pendant light, so it's probably dripping down inside the top half of the no, as well. Not necessarily, maybe. Just, no, you, you turn the fucking electric off. Jesus fuck, uh, just isolate the bulb, do fucking something. Yeah, but it hadn't shorted out itself yet, so it was still good. And it's super safe, because you're British, so all your stuff's at 240 volts, so if it was going to screw up, you'd know. And if it's holding that <laughs> off, you're fine. We've actually used BC, but uh, 
I'm bogus. All right. Everything from the seat forward is done. Everything from this battery down is done. And I've got my nice big giant abortion happening right in the middle. So this, <laughs> we just we just fold up the wires gently without kinking anything. This is where we, because you're going to have some ugly because this is all pre-terminated shit. So there's going to be a little bit ugly, but you can consolidate that ugly. Much like I try to consolidate all of my ugly on my face. you got to have consolidated ugly. And hide it with camera angles. I got like four cameras pointing at me. Five, I think. One, two, three, four, five cameras pointing at me right now. So I don't think we're hiding a damn thing. Yeah, but he's only running the one. Sarge is running the PTZ because that camera moves. Yeah. All the other cameras are just recording, like, and I'll I'll fix it in post. As I said, see the magic of editing. My editing isn't so magical. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my work. <laughs> the magic of my editing is: why do you still make videos? What what possesses you to still yeah. want to do this? <laughs> Wait, when I first moved in, the, the lights in the apartment block. It was set up such that, it, that the hallway lighting would turn on at night and off in the morning. And that's fine, that's good. Um, no one, we always assumed there's a light sensor, which technically there was, until so there was a guy outside working on street lighting, and he noticed something. Whenever he turned the power off to the street light, the lights in the building in front of him turned off as well. <laughs> and he's like, wait a fucking second. On, off, on, off, on, off. Motherfuckers are stealing power. Perfect. You get deep shit for that. Why? Like, so yeah, the reason it was turning on and off was because as the street lights come on at night, the building lights come on. Yep. Oh, dude. Guys, 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 guys. 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 I think it's done. Alright. I think Sweet. Now, stop no, a GoPro no, and like go on the adventure. Alright. You need camera mounts on it. There's a camera yeah. mount right there. Quarter 20 up the top. Yeah, there's a camera mount right there. But I think it's done. Alright, hang on. You know if you want a cool ca camera shot, you pick up one of the cameras, mount it to it, and then in one continuous edited shot, take it outside and light it. <laughs> I think it's done. I think we built an e-bike. Well... Okay, do, do your brakes work? Yeah. Those are secondary. Yeah, okay. Hang on. Brakes work, front brakes work. I think we're at the point of no return. Rear brakes work. Steering. The pedals. I can steer. All right, the only thing I need now is I need to know how to change this to America. America's miles an hour? I need, I need miles an hour on here. I always thought you guys were kilometers. No, we're, we're miles an hour. Really? So guys, I got, Sarge, can you zoom in on that so you can see what we got? We got three uh, buttons. Get a number for it? Oh, hang on. One day I'll have more zoom and I'll be happy. Sarge is at a zoom on the camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm in as tight as I'm getting. But even the post is hard to get in on that, and the first thing he does is move his head in the way. Well, oh, hang on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that resets my thing.
What the fuck is that? If I hold the down button... Cruise control? It's got a little picture of a dude walking. Maybe it's your idol? Yeah, so idol cruise control? The, the top button, if you hold it down, it turns the, the backlight on and ostensibly the headlight, but there's nowhere to plug a fucking headlight in. Um, Alright guys, figure out how to get this into kilometers an hour. You got a number for it. The next block of The number out. on the back is impossible to read in the light. Um, hang on. No. Okay. Here is that. The next block log video is Chris just racing down the hill out of control and suddenly. <laughs> Lord darts himself into a light pole. <clears throat> oh, I got the number you want. Hang on. If he's really cool, he'll post that direct to Discord. I can't really see it. Alright, I'll give you the numbers I can. Shit, I know how to do this. Isn't there like a thing where I can just jump onto your wish list or your Amazon and find out where you bought that from? You'd have to go through my orders, but, um, yeah, but that, I don't think I'll give you the information you actually want. Hang on a second. I'm going to take this off. Well, you help everyone else, I'm going to go find it. Okay, you ready? Oh, yeah, this is good. All right, get ready to copy. You ready? Oh, no, you don't make me fucking copy it on here. Somebody, whoever answers me is going to be the one to copy it. All right, the lettering on the back says KT-LCD5, so Kilo Tango, hyphen, Lima, Charlie, Delta, 5, yeah. space, Victor, 1.0, Niner, Echo, and then 2... KT-LCD5, version 1.098. KT LCD5 version 1.0 space 9E. And that says 243648, which is the voltages it'll work on. And now I'll put this back in there. So that's that's my little brain box, Dingus. And now we know. Looks like the man was in uh, White Street deck. Alright, how do I how do I change it to miles an hour? Mr. Bellatini, sir! I, I, I'm gonna need his help for a second. Okay. Alright. It's got more gravity to it now than it did before? It's got a lot more gravity to it now. This thing probably weighs about a better part of 100 pounds, 80 to 100 pounds probably. I don't know, I'm, I'd have to weigh it. Alright guys, so that is day three on the e-bike. I thought there would be a video four, but this turned out to be where we're at. Um, this is initial road testing. I'm going to take this thing outside and see what she'll do. But yeah, thank you for hanging out and building an electric bike with me. You guys are awesome and I appreciate you joining for the fun. I'm going to get out of here because it's a sunny autumn day. I'm going to grab a jacket and take this thing for a ride. You guys have fun. I'll see you later. If this works successfully, the next thing you'll see is really awesome footage of me riding an e-bike. and going Whee! So yeah, thanks guys. So so you have to set a couple of things before you can change the speed. Okay, what? You have to go 
hold the up and down for five seconds, which brings you into the maximum writing speed setting. Okay. You pick what you want, hold the power button shortly to set that. All right. Do it up and down. Hang on, again. hang on, hang on, hang on. Pick on. the wheel size. All right, hang on a second. Let me, let me just. You do it a third time and you get into the units. Okay, hang on. I'm going to turn it on. You yeah. tell me what to do. Because we'll do this real quick and then Steve okay. can help me get this upstairs. Yeah. All right, it's on. What's next? Hold the up and down buttons at the same time. Okay, and then? It should flash the writing speed. The maximum writing speed should flash. And then you hold up or down shortly to set what you want. Pick the number you want, so it'll throttle you basically. All right, and then? Then hold the power button shortly, and it shall go to the next setting, which is wheel diameter. Got that. Okay, hit your up or down to pick what wheel size you got. By the way, in Michigan, it's 20 miles an hour, three bikes. Yep, and now that I've got it, What's P146? Wait, it's What's, what? What's P1? I got P1 and then the number 46 flashing. What does that mean? It's not telling me that one in the thing Sparky posted in the shorthand. If you scroll up or down, what do you get? P2 will go from 0 to 6. Interesting. P3 will go 1 or 0. That's what uh, it looks like. It's the assist. So if you're walking with your bike, you pass. Ah. And it will power it by walking at the other distance. Okay. Okay, I'm out of menu mode, into regular mode. Okay, I think we got it. I'll be back in a minute, guys. Steven, sir, I need your help to get this off the thing and up the stairs. Um, this is about to be a lot heavier than when I brought it down. So hold the bike, and I'll undo the clamp. Thankfully for safety and ergonomics, almost all of the weight is focused on the ass end. Okay. I'll take one end, you take the other. I'm going to turn it over here. Wow. <laughs>